Did you know that home buyers spend nearly 60% of their time shopping for a home just looking at photos? They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In this case, a picture is worth an entire real estate listing. In my own real estate business, I've had to learn how to do my own photography. And these tips for real estate photography have helped me to create amazing photographs from my real estate listings. But you don't need to be a professional photographer to create professional looking real estate photographs. Here's what we'll cover in today's video as well as timestamps so you can forward to the part you're most interested in or watch all the way through. Pre-production, before you start taking photographs. Production, tips for real estate photography at the shoot. Post-production, after shooting frequently asked questions on real estate photography. What's going on everyone? I'm Kyle Handy, a realtor and team leader here in San Antonio, Texas. I help teach other realtors, team leaders, and brokers how to grow and scale their real estate business through digital marketing, content creation, social media, as well as tried and true methods. And if you want proven strategies that you can use to get more leads, closings, and scale your team, you'll love this video. Keep watching. Pre-production, before you start taking photographs. Tip number one, buy the camera that suits your work process. Some real estate professionals swear by their smartphones. Others invest thousands in a professional grade modular camera system. And while you can definitely tell the difference between the photos they produce, it may not be as big of a difference as you think. One of the best tips for real estate photography is simply purchasing a professional camera. Need help finding the best camera for real estate agents? Check out my other video that I'll link above here. A professional digital SLR camera will produce better photographs easier. That much is inarguable, but as a real estate professional, it's more of a question of your habits. If you're frequently running from listing to listing with nothing but a bag in hand, you probably aren't going to have an expensive DSLR camera on you. You may want to capture listings on the fly. On the other hand, if you're covering luxury or high value listings and you spend hours shooting each one, then it makes more sense to have a complete professional camera kit. Tip number two, buy a wide angle lens. If you're going to invest in a camera, you should also invest in a wide angle lens for real estate photography. A wide angle lens produces large images that cover a field of view larger than the human eye can see. Wide angle lenses are what make most interior design photographs feel so alluring and open. That being said, you don't need to go overboard. You can get a 16 millimeter wide angle lens, which will usually be a few hundred dollars rather than an ultra wide, which is usually over a thousand dollars. You can get a 16 millimeter wide angle lens, which will usually only be a few hundred dollars. Tip number three, never use a fisheye lens. Many inexperienced real estate agents find themselves using a fisheye lens for their real estate photography. They worry that a property just feels too small and perhaps it does without a wide angle lens, so they artificially distort the image. Sometimes they aren't even using a regular fisheye lens. Sometimes they're using a filter. A fisheye lens is not a wide angle lens. It distorts an image so that it appears both larger and curved. A wide angle lens displays more of the image without any distortion. It's pretty obvious when even a professional photographer is using a fisheye lens. People who recognize this type of photo editing will be put off by the listing, and people who don't recognize it will attend the listing expecting something else entirely. Remember, you want to be realistic. If you mislead people about your posting, you'll just waste your own time. Tip number four, get your accessories in order. What else goes in your camera kit? Apart from your camera and lenses, at a minimum, you'll also need a tripod, hopefully one that comes with remote operation. A tripod will stabilize your images and make sure you're taking them from the right perspective. You can invest as much as you want in accessories, but you don't need to get too fancy. If you're shooting luxury homes, you might want lighting and light diffusers, but at some points there are diminishing returns. You don't need to haul 300 pounds of gear into every condo. There are even accessories available for smartphones. If you're using your smartphone for images, consider at least getting a handheld tripod. Many smartphones today have a wide angle lens built into them. Tip number five, 
consider getting a drone. If you want the best exterior shots, you need a drone for real estate. There are entry-level drones for a few hundred dollars today, with professional-grade drones going for a few thousand. A drone makes it possible to take pictures from above the property. Before, these photos required a professional photographer. Today, they're actually fairly easy to learn to take on your own. Think about your current listings. Would they benefit from aerial photography? And you can use drones for other things too, such as creating virtual tours with flybys. Tip number six, scope out the property first. While it might be convenient to tackle everything at once, it's a better idea to tour the location before you plan a shoot. It'll give you a better idea of when to shoot, when is the best time of day, and what to bring. The homeowner might have glaringly white bulbs in all of their lamps. You may want to update that with more soothing lighting. Or the homeowner might have a tremendous amount of clutter in their living room. So maybe you'll need to come up with a strategy to hide that. Take some time to think about which areas of the house should be highlighted and what time of the day the exterior will look best. You can put together an entire kit of staging accessories alongside your camera accessories. Tip number seven, plan on taking the right shots. In general, there should at least be one shot of every room. There should be multiple shots of important rooms, the living room, kitchen, main bedroom, main bathroom, and there should be several shots of the exterior. It can be tempting to take shots of everything, but at a certain point, you're actually just increasing the chances that a buyer might see something that leaves them less than enthused. A bare yard requires only a few pictures unless you're trying to highlight its bareness. Make a list of shots in advance and consider what you might need to bring to them. This is where your realtor sense comes in. Think about what's trending in your area. Production. Tips for real estate photography at the shoot. Tip number eight, shoot at the right time of day. For exterior shots, the magic hour is frequently preferred. That is the last hour of daylight before the sun sets. It's a time when the lighting hits just right to make almost everything look fantastic. For interior shots, you usually want it to be fairly well lit and clear outside. You should be able to open all the drapes and windows and have bright, clean light shining in. You should avoid shooting when it's overcast or rainy. Even inside, it can cast a strange darkness across the photo. While you can clean this up in post-production, it may still look a little depressing to have gray skies through the windows. And don't even try to replace the skies in the windows. It almost always looks fake. Tip number nine, declutter the property. There are few things as distracting as clutter. As you take photos, you should remove all clutter, even if you're just shifting it around as you go. While some homes actually do sell themselves on how busy they are, such as that one listing you might have that has dozens and dozens of paintings and knickknacks, most buyers want to see something that hasn't been personalized. That doesn't mean you need to remove everything. Unless you're going to empty the entire room, you don't want it to look bare. The area you want is between a single magazine on the coffee table and an entire stack of magazines on the table. Tip number 10, rearrange the furniture. The furniture should be positioned to be open. Essentially, that means it should be tilted toward you when you take the photo, almost as though your camera is a physical third party at the scene. When you look at real estate marketing, you'll frequently see this type of layout. In reality, it may look odd to have a table and some chairs that are pointed away from each other. But the idea is really that you and the viewer have presence in the photograph. It makes the image feel welcoming, personal, and complete. Even a little staging can really help a photographer bring the personality of a home through. Tip number 11, let in the light. Light changes the way everything looks. It also means that an image itself will have higher levels of contrast and brighter colors making the photo easier to edit in the future. Of all types of lighting, natural lighting is the easiest to work with. Artificial lighting can seem uncomfortable or harsh. Low light almost always produces low quality images. When shooting interior rooms, let in as much light as possible. If there isn't enough light, don't be afraid to use flash. Flash can make a dingy room look bright and inviting. It also prevents items in the foreground from looking too dark. If, for instance, you're shooting against windows, the current lighting might make the furniture look shadowed. Rather than changing the lighting, you can just use flash to remove the shadows from the furniture. Tip number 12, play around with color. A little pop of color can really help an interior photo stand out. 
It can also help direct the viewer's eye toward features that you want to call attention to. Throw pillows are a great choice because you can bring them with you and just toss them into your interior shots. You can also bring little items of decor with you. For a long time, the trend has been toward neutral colored homes. Recently, a lot of homes have been going all white, but bringing a touch of color in adds a touch of personality and it stops the viewer from continuing to scroll by. Tip number 13. Turn on exterior lights. When shooting the exterior of a home, consider shooting at night with all the external lights on. External lights are generally designed to light up a home in an aesthetically pleasing way. Having one picture of a listing at night and one during the day is a great idea, especially if the listing has some interesting architectural features. Homes can show more personality at different times throughout the day. Tip number 14 keep the camera straight. When actually taking photos, do your best to keep the camera straight. Try to take photos with your tripod if you can't otherwise stabilize them. You can fix this when editing, but it'll be more difficult than just getting it right the first time. While taking a tilted shot may feel more dramatic, it also gives a skewed perspective of what you're taking a picture of. Skewed pictures are considered artistic, but they're not necessarily an accurate representation. Most people really just want to see exactly what what the property looks like. The modifications you make are just supposed to help the property put its best foot forward. If your photographs look nothing like the property, they aren't useful. Tip number 15, take most of your shots at eye level. Imagine your eventual buyer as the person who is taking your photographs. You should take your shots at eye level so it feels natural to anyone viewing it. Apart from dealing with issues such as white balance, this is probably one of the most important real estate photography tips to digest. A lot of people have the inclination for whatever reason to take photos from above. But if you take a photo from the upper corner of a room, you'll just skew the way that the property looks. The photo itself will also feel a little off kilter. It's better to take your listing photos from your own perspective. In film, this is often called medium shots, shots that give the camera itself a presence. Tip number 16, pay attention to shutter speed. The wrong shutter speed is a sure way to end up taking bad real estate photos. If your shutter speed is too fast, image quality may go down. The camera isn't letting in enough light. If your shutter speed is too slow, the image can become grainy or blurry. Your camera should have specific settings for different types of pictures, such as landscapes, interiors, and portraits. But play around with the settings when taking your listing photos until you get something that feels right to you. If you don't know a lot about cameras and you don't care to, you never have to use the manual mode. You can leave a digital SLR camera on fully automatic and let it take care of things like lens correction, flash, and different exposures. But learning about these settings can help you take higher quality pictures in more scenarios. Tip number 17, be realistic about flaws. A lot of real estate agents intentionally leave problems out of their photos. They may take a whole virtual tour, but never show the floor or never enter a certain room. They may tilt their camera away from a particularly bad DIY job. But again, this really just wastes your time. Take realistic pictures of things like damage, repair issues, and bad DIY jobs. This will lead a buyer to think, well, that's not so bad once they get there rather than I had no idea about this problem. No need to showcase it, but don't worry about if it shows up in some of your photos. Post-production, after shooting. Tip number 18, straighten and crop your photos. The first thing you should do with your photos is to crop it down to the relevant image and then tilt it so that all straight lines go up and down. Otherwise, they will be distracting. Most cameras actually have the ability to perform basic image editing functions inside the camera itself. For other updates though, you might consider using Adobe Lightroom for photo editing. Adobe Photoshop can also be used for more in-depth photo modifications. Make sure your images still have right size and resolution after you've cropped them. You don't wanna crop them down so small that they'll barely have any detail. Tip number 19, correct the color, contrast, and saturation. Correcting the color, contrast, and saturation will make a photo look more vibrant, realistic, and detailed. There's a lot that can be corrected with editing software. If your entire image has a dull gray cast, for instance, correcting the contrast and saturation should fix it. If your image is very dark, you can improve the contrast. 
If your colors are too vivid, you can reduce the saturation. Play around with the lighting settings and white balance to find that sweet spot that makes the images look as close to reality as it can. Pay particular attention to the colors. Do the colors look right? Do they look natural? Tip number 20. Hire a professional for modifications. If you don't want to learn about Lightroom presets or how to edit a shot on your own, you can always hire a professional. Services like Fiverr, Freelancer, and People Per Hour make it possible to hire affordable artists and photo editors to modify your image. Even if your camera settings were incorrect or you experienced some lens distortion, you might be able to get your photographs corrected. And it's often a lot more affordable than you might think. Tip 21, use digital staging apps or services. If you didn't want to or you couldn't do your own staging and lighting in real life, you can also consider using digital staging apps or virtual staging services. A digital staging service can take your existing photo and dramatically change it. It can change lighting, empty rooms, and stage rooms with digital furnishings. This is usually done by professionals, but there are also applications that let you do it yourself. Interested in learning more about virtual staging software? Check out my other video that I'll link above here. It's sometimes worth it to clear the clutter in a room digitally or even to do home renovations and home modifications in an app. This will show a buyer what a property will truly look like once changes have been made. However, I recommend only using this to this extent if you are going to make those changes prior to listing, but they had not been completed prior to you taking the photos. Tip number 22 upload high resolution images. Once you're in the home stretch, you'll also need to make sure you upload the right images. Your shot should be high resolution. They should be able to be viewed on large screen while still seeing the details. If they aren't high resolution, people will strain to actually see what the property looks like. Today, most images should be a minimum of 1440 pixels to look great on large screens. Tip number 23, avoid editing too much. When it comes to the best tips for real estate photography, a little editing goes a long way. Too much editing makes things look fake, and it may make someone wonder exactly what you're hiding. A great example of this is HDR. A little HDR makes a listing really pop in a way that it might very well pop in real life, but may not depict it on a screen. However, a lot of HDR makes an image look unusual and fake. Likewise, a fisheye lens or filter just makes people think that the room must be unusually small. You wouldn't bother using a fisheye lens if you weren't trying to hide the size. Do edit your images. But the goal should be to edit the images toward looking like reality rather than moving them away from reality. Tip number 24, don't use filters. Instagram will encourage you to filter your images as you post them. Even your smartphone might repeatedly prompt you to filter an image, but a filter is always going to look unrealistic, even if it does look better. It's easy to start using filters so frequently that things stop looking right without them. But people who aren't used to that filter will see an image that is blown out, too highly saturated, or just too colorful. Tip number 25, don't forget to post on social media. Once you have your real estate photography properly shot and edited, it's time to post your photography online. You can post your photo on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, your personal website, and more. Your real estate photography is essentially part of your portfolio. It shows sellers what you can do for others, which also outlines what you can do for them. You might not want to become a full-time real estate photographer, but these real estate photography tips should at minimum make you more effective at developing your real estate listings. Becoming a great real estate photographer takes time, and there's always room for growth. You can choose to shoot on a smartphone, or you can choose to invest in drone photography. You can personally edit each shot, or you can hire a professional. Either way, you should soon see how an effective shot can dramatically increase the popularity and effectiveness of your real estate listing. Frequently asked questions on real estate photography. How can I improve my real estate photography? Getting a better camera, learning how to frame shots, and learning basic image editing techniques are the best ways to improve real estate photography. When taking a shot, think about things like lighting, clutter and where you're standing to take the photo. How should I edit my real estate photographs? Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop are two popular applications for editing and improving real estate photography. But there are also real estate professionals who simply edit their real estate photographs 
on their smartphones. How much should I edit my real estate photographs? In general, you should edit your photographs for framing, which is cropping and tilting, brighten the colors and improve saturation and contrast. Beyond that, you shouldn't extensively edit real estate photographs unless you have a very good reason, such as removing clutter. What makes real estate photos look so good? There are a lot of things that professional photographers do to improve a shoot, but one of the best tips for real estate photography is that a wide angle lens improves the shot. A wide angle lens is how you get photographs that feel large and welcoming. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on that subscribe button below this video. Also, hit that thumbs up button and give this video a like as it helps my videos reach more real estate agents looking to grow their businesses. And by the way, if you're interested in partnering with me at eXp Realty, head over to my partner page and check out the exclusive benefits you receive. I'm passionate about helping agents win. I've already partnered with nearly 100 agents across the country to help them increase their real estate business and generate more leads, and I'm never too busy for you. When you partner with me, you receive free access to all of my current and future paid courses, which you can find on academy.kylehandy.com. Additionally, you get access to my private Facebook community called The Dream Team, where I go live multiple times per week. Head over to kylehandy.com forward slash partner for more information. Finally, if you've made it this far, I want to thank you. Type hashtag end crew in the comments to let me know that you watched to the end. And now I want to turn it over to you. Are there any real estate photography tips that you'd like to share? Which tips did you find most helpful? Until my next video, be well and get out there and sell some homes.